how to make floating eyebrows for your puppet. To the puppet nerds of the world, this may sound absurd, but this is the place you need to be. We'll do an interview and then we'll stitch and glue, all of the dolls will make it shake. If you want to be in the know when to play like a pro, subscribe to Kruttinger Puppets. Adam Krutinger here and welcome back to the channel where we believe puppetry is for everyone and you can do it too. Today is a really interesting project because what we're going to be tackling is floating eyebrows. Now you might be wondering, what are floating eyebrows? This is a feature that you commonly see in cartoon drawings and animations. A couple that stick out are the eyebrows in Phineas and Ferb, the eyebrows from characters like Fear from Inside Out. And it's not limited to just eyebrows either. You could even use it for other features like in Fairly Odd Parents. Notice how their crowns float over their head. This would be another way to use a technique kind of like that. Now you might be thinking, how in the world are we gonna do this with puppets? We can't have these objects magically floating. But the inspiration for this kind of is magic. Way long ago, I used to be a professional magician and I remember there was this one special trick called the dancing hanky, spoiler alert. But I remember one of the ways that it was done, there was a thin coiled wire that came out holding the hanky. So from stage, it looked like it was floating. Now obviously it's not the perfect solution because you could see it in close-ups, but it's about as good as you can get with a puppet. One thing that I thought was interesting about this trick though, that the wire was coiled instead of straight. Because if you think about it, the keen eye will be looking for a straight wire. So especially from a far distance, having a coiled wire kind of breaks up the view of that object because it's not quite what they were expecting. That coil works really well for smaller objects like the eyebrows, but if you were gonna do something bigger like the hat, you'd probably wanna use a straight wire because it will hold up a little better in being stronger. But then again, it's also going to be easier to see, so there is that trade-off. Let's take a look at some of these supplies. If you want to do the coil method, you're going to need a spring like this. This is a spring that I also like to use for a lot of my mechanisms, so it also comes in handy for this technique too. It's really thin, and you'll notice that when I stretch it out, it gets even thinner. But if you need something a little stronger, here's another stiffer wire that I found on Amazon, and I have a link to this down in the description as well. Now to make the actual eyebrows, you can use whatever you want. You could use fur like this, but today I'm gonna use some sticky back felt. Now in my past videos on how to make pupils for your eyes, I use sticky back velvet. That's a little bit different, and this works a little bit better for the eyebrows than the velvet does. But if it's all you have, you can just use whatever you want. And for this example today, we're gonna be putting eyebrows on this little snoof puppet. If you want to learn how to make a simple puppet like this, I have a couple videos online. I have a short tutorial that's only two minutes long, but if you like a more in-depth description, I also have one that's almost an hour long that takes you in real time through the entire process. And you can click on the cards right here to find that. All right, let's get started. Now for this, I'm gonna zoom in really tight because I'm working with really small, thin pieces this time. That should make it a little bit easier for you all to follow. Now the tools you're gonna need are some clippers and some pliers. Most pliers though also have little clippers built in. Now there's two types of springs. One type of spring is called an extension spring like this. This is what I use for a lot of mechanisms, but there's another type of spring like this. This is called a compression spring because it's meant to be compressed and the spring back out. Now for this project, you could use either one of these and actually the compression spring might actually be a better choice. However, I almost always have this extension spring on hand because it's the same spring I use for all my mechanisms. So this is what I'm gonna use today because I think it's the most practical since I always have it on hand. So the first thing I do is I extend it but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hyperextend it so it doesn't spring back like this. This is typically something you would never wanna do with a spring because it does kind of wreck the spring. It makes it not quite work the way you would intend for it to work. But it's gonna be perfect for these purposes. And notice the difference, like I mentioned before too, when I bring in this straight wire, you can see it a little bit easier. The fact that this has a wavy path, I think just makes it a little bit trickier to see on the eye, which is what I like about it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clip this off. There and there. So I have a piece like this. And what I wanna to try to do is bend a little bit of a loop into one end, that way you don't have something poking through. So we've got that little loop there, and now I'm gonna use my felt here. First thing I wanna do is draw a little cartoon eyebrow. 
I'll do one like that. I'm gonna cut it out. And then I'm gonna trace it again so I have a perfect copy. There we go. Now this is actually enough to make one eyebrow because I'm going to use this as the front and back and sandwich it together. So now what I'm going to do is peel off this sticky back here. I like to use a little needle. It makes it easier to hold. And what I'm going to do is stick it on like this. Then I'm going to take this other half and sandwich it on. just like that. And as you can see, it's kind of coming straight down and I want to give it a slight little curve. So I'm just going to take these pliers here and just give it a nice little bend. And there we have one of the little floating eyebrows. And I'm just going to repeat the process for the other side. And there we have it, two floating eyebrows. Now another way to do it is to actually have it come out of more of the center of the eyebrow too. That's another technique that I use sometimes. But it really depends on the design of the puppet where it's gonna come out of. And another thing you can do too is you could easily just use fur for these eyebrows as well. Again, that depends on the design of your puppet. Today we're gonna leave it with these. So now what I wanna do is essentially have these eyes look like they're floating right above the eye, just like that. Now, if you wanted to, if this wire was longer on this eyebrow, you could attach it all the way from the base, but I like to keep this wire as short as possible, okay? Now, there's a couple different places you could attach it. You could, if you had it on this wire that comes out of the middle of the eyebrow, you could attach it from the back like this and have it float behind. That's nice too, but what I don't like about that is that then you got this little spot where it's coming out of the back. One thing I like about it being on the side or kind of underneath the silhouette of the contour of the eyebrow. So watch, this is still a little long. Let me cut it down a little bit more. So the fact is, that if you put it on the side like this, it's gonna take up a lot less of a profile, especially when it's further, deeper down into that eye. Even when you turn to the side, that way the eyebrow is kind of covering up that spot. So that's my favorite spot. Now let me snip this one to match. And I wanna mark exactly where the hole is gonna go, the hole that I'm gonna drill. I'm gonna mark it with a pencil so I get it in the perfect spot. So it looks like I want it to go about right here. And this spot will change for you depending on your design. And it's going to be about right here on this side. You want to get it as close as possible to being symmetrical. However, since it is a wire, we can kind of bend it around a little bit. Now with this drilling technique, make sure you're being very careful. It's gonna seem like a really unusual technique, but it's the best way I've found to drill such a small hole. And we actually already use this technique to make shake eyes like Cookie Monster. Click here if you wanna see that video too. But here's what you do. You take an old pin or an old needle and you put it into the chuck of your drill. Now the hard part about this is even when the chuck is closed all the way completely, there's still a bit of a gap there that is too large for the needle to fit. You'll notice it's just sliding into that little hole and it's just not gonna hold on to it. So the best way to do it is actually to make it slightly off center like this. so that it can actually hold the needle. And then tighten it. Now that's a good hold on it. Now the only problem with this is when we power up the drill, that needle's gonna be wobbling around like this. Now I'll do a quick demo on this spare eye here. The way to counter that is to actually have the needle touch the spot where you wanna drill first, and then when you start drilling, it's only gonna go into that one spot, like this. And 
and just like that, you have the perfect size hole that will fit this wire exactly. Just like that. Now let's try it on our puppet. Now depending on the thickness of the wire that you use and the thickness of the needle that you use to drill, you may or may not need to use a little bit of glue. I'm going to use a little bit of super glue today too. That was way too much to put there. So all I'm going to do is dip my wire in the glue and stick it back into that hole just like that. Then you're going to have to hold it for a little bit too. And if you want a little bit more security, you can put a tiny little dot right on this hole. And once these wires are secure to the eyes, you can still bend them around a little bit to change the expression of your puppet. And there he is. And I'm really happy with how this little guy came out. This is a really fun technique to use once in a while. I wouldn't recommend it on necessarily every type of puppet design, but for just the right projects, it works perfectly. And you're not limited to puppets that have the eyes on top of the head. Any puppet design that has a short forehead will work with this as well. If you enjoyed this video, I have hundreds of videos on how to make puppets and how to be a puppeteer right here on this YouTube channel. So make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And if you want to find more tutorials and puppet news, make sure to check out puppetnerd.com. And I've also had a lot of people asking me about my shirt as well. It is now available and you can find it on Amazon. All links are down in the description. And if you use any of my tutorials or want to show me your puppets, make sure to tag me on Instagram and Twitter. That's the fastest way for me to see them. Or join the community on Facebook. We have our own private Facebook group called the Kruinger Puppet Tutorial Q&A. That's the best place to get in contact with me if you have any questions. Anyway, that's it for now. I'll see you next time.